Hey, this is Eric with The Off-Grid Guru, and for the premiere of this channel, I'm going to be releasing a series of videos covering the documentation of a radical architectural movement emerging in Pennsylvania. For the next two months, I'm going to be releasing interviews, home tours, and a full-length documentary. I'll be introducing you to a community of trailblazers whose alternative ideas have resulted in the construction of three unique and inspirational structures. To start telling this story, I'd like to take you on a trip down memory lane and show you some photos from a time before I was filming my life for the off-grid guru. Well, when I got to Pennsylvania, it turned out that there were actually two projects. The first one was a restoration project where we were going to rebuild an existing greenhouse. And the second was a groundbreaking standalone structure near Philadelphia. This Earthship inspired greenhouse was the first of its kind in America to be built within the city limits. In this video, I'm going to be taking a look back on the restoration project that we did at Stonehenge Gardens in Tamaqua, Pennsylvania. The first thing I noticed when I arrived at Stonehenge was the peaceful atmosphere, the beautiful lakes, waterfalls, and also a really interesting stone orb that was in the garden when you first entered. After taking a look around, I immediately noticed a greenhouse that had fallen into disrepair over the years. It was so obvious that this is the project that we were going to be working on. It already looked like an earthship, it just needed a new life brought to it, so we immediately started putting some love into the structure by removing the ugly moss-covered panes of plastic and then tearing down the aluminum frame, giving us a clear slate to build from. With the opportunity to excavate a channel for the gray water botanical cell before we started closing in the structure, it was just an ideal time to do the digging and really saved a lot of sweat and man hours to be able to just have an excavator come. We couldn't tell that there was a gravel floor in the old greenhouse until we started digging, at which point it revealed that there was about a foot of gravel underneath for drainage, so that was great. This is probably my favorite moment of the entire build when Lauren discovered that we had pounded the first tires. She was so surprised. You know, tire pounding is something that I'm just so used to after having done the Earthship Academy, but of course it's uh, pretty strange for most people who've never seen it. So when we started pounding the first tires at the greenhouse build here, it was a really monumentous occasion. The co-owner of Stonehenge Gardens, Tom, even came down and pounded a tire himself as well as uh, many, many more volunteers who came and helped us. This really labor-intensive process is actually an excellent way to reuse something that would normally just be thrown away in a landfill. By ramming earth into the tires, you form a structural block that can be used for the foundation and even the walls of a house. Because the construction of this tire wall started on either side and then met in the middle, when the tire wall met itself, there was an awkward space that was later filled with concrete in order to even out the foundation. A classic earthship building technique using cans and mortar was used in other awkward areas. The next step for the foundational wall after the tires was something called a bond beam, which connects all the tires together and also forms a stable and level surface for the framing to be built upon. Alright, so I know that it's a little hard to understand what we're doing here in the photos, so I just wanted to bring us over to the whiteboard and I could do a drawing. It'll be a lot easier to explain what we're doing and what we're trying to achieve. So we've already seen how we pounded a tire wall for the foundation of the greenhouse, but that's not where we're at yet. I'm just going to back us up a few steps to the beginning when we dug a trench. In this system, the idea is to minimize the amount of outside water that we have to bring in in order to water our plants. Instead, the design utilizes a rubber-lined planter bed which contains and treats water that was normally just flushed down the drain from the showers and sinks 
and instead is being reused one more time to water the plants in the greenhouse before it is finally flushed out into the septic field. So that's just a complicated way of saying that you're wasting less water because every time you take a shower, you're watering the plants in the greenhouse. Whenever you use the sink, you're watering the plants in the greenhouse. So this is just a system that is reusing the water that comes from the farmhouse. Before we installed the bond beam, I had uh, been tearing down some of the wood and discovered that there were termites, mostly because when I went inside and looked in the mirror, I could see them crawling in my hair. But anyways, it was a major setback. We had to wait for the exterminator to come, and then eventually we had to replace the studs and um, put some new sill plates up. And after that, we were ready to move on. Things started to really take shape once the framing was installed. By far, the trickiest part of the process was the angle. Um, it would have been much, much easier to have just done a vertical 90 degree face, but because this is a passive solar greenhouse, the angle is required to capture the winter sun. Well, it is Pennsylvania, so it ended up raining before we were able to get the roof closed in, and that actually proved to us that the gray water cell would hold water. That was great because it meant that there were no leaks, but it also meant that we were standing in water while we were working, so we ended up having to come up with some solutions to uh, pump the water out. You could feel the tension in the air the day that the glass was installed. If we had done everything correctly, each pane of glass should fit perfectly in the window frame with no effort. And that's exactly what they did. As each pane of glass was put in, the entire character of the building changed as the reflection on the surface of the glass grew, showing the sky above us. I stayed on the project for quite some time after that, but don't seem to have any photos. Unfortunately, that's as far as my documentation goes for this project. However, I was able to see the finished greenhouse when I returned in the fall of 2020. It was really incredible to just stand in the greenhouse so full of life, just taking a look around at the result of all of the hard work of all of the people that were involved in the project. and really just getting a chance to come back and see uh, the fruit of our labor. Just looking down at the floor and the walls, knowing how much recycled material went into building this structure, from the bricks in the floor to the glass bottles in the walls, they were all materials that were going to be thrown out that were given a second life inside the structure. Well, that was it for this video. I hope you liked it. Next video, we're going to be taking a look at Will Vogler's greenhouse in his backyard near Philadelphia. I also have an interview with Tom Moroz from Stonehenge Gardens, as well as a home tour of a residential earthship in Pennsylvania, and a full-length documentary. So if you don't want to miss out, then be sure to like and subscribe.